Adam Yurjek has the potential to be the top defenseman in this class, but is coming off a major knee injury. Tony Ferrari joins to profile the Czech defenseman. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked On Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. My name is J.D. Young, caretaker at The Reef. I want to thank you for making Locked On Sharks your first listen, probably part of the Locked On Network. We cover your team every day. If you want to be an everyday, or all you have to do is just follow wherever you get podcasts, or you can watch this on YouTube as well. And today we're going to be doing another draft profile. Adam Yurchek, the Czech defenseman, um, with our good friend Tony Ferrari. Uh, so we're going to talk about Yurchek, uh, compare him to his brother David, who is part of the Columbus Pipeline, um, where he would fit in, why it's worth the risk for the Sharks to look at him at potentially at number 14. Plus... We're going to be talking about Macklin Celebrini with uh, our good friend Tony, where he kind of his impact with San Jose. So before we get to all that, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. And now we welcome back our ball king, Tony Ferrari. How's it going, buddy? Not too bad. Uh... I hear good things are happening in Sharks Land. Uh, finally, uh, it has been we we are finally being graced uh, with what we deserve. Uh, I'm just gonna say it. I deserve after the, <laughs> this past season. So uh, yes, we'll talk Macklin Celebrity more, but we're gonna we're continuing our focus on this 14th pick and who the Sharks uh, should uh, look at here. And we're going to be talking about a player here who's got a lot of question marks because of injury factor, but uh, that is one. Adam Yurchek, uh, the defenseman. Uh, if you don't know about him, uh, he only played 19 games this year. Uh, has some knee issues. Uh, zero goals, one assist, 26 shots on goal. Six foot two, 178 pound defenseman. So, Tony, as I ask everybody, what makes Adam Yurchek an intriguing prospect? He's a physical specimen. He's a lot of tools. I know there the injury is obviously the big thing that everyone's going to point to. Uh, that happened at the World Juniors. But this kid is a very good skater. I think there's a little bit more room to grow, and he's already got good size. Uh, he's a physical freak already. He's strong, playing against men, and he brings some offensive and defensive upside. I think that's the thing that is really valuable with a guy like Adam Juracek is he can do both. He's not a guy mm -hmm. that you're looking at like a Zane Parekh who's like just this offensive guy, and he's not an Anton Salaev who's purely kind of a defensive guy. He he can do a little bit of everything, and had that injury not shortened his season, he probably goes in the top 10. He's one of my favorite defensemen in the draft class, and it's been really fun kind of going back and watching him again uh, as I get to the end of the year and I want to solidify my rankings and whatnot. I, I go back and watch the limited tape that I have on him, and it's like, man, yeah, I wish we got to see the progression from the start of the year to the end because there's a lot of players in this year's draft class that really have taken big steps, and we are mm -hmm. starting to see Juracek take those, and then the injury happened. So, I mean, right. We, we, that's going to be the big question, right? Is, is the injury happened? It's going to be a lot of projection for him. But uh, what do you see as his kind of from the limited tape, what you've watched from him last year? Uh, what do you kind of see his, his going to be his best skill as he can, as he gets better, uh, gets fully healthy and make and continues his progression? I, I think it's his ability to kind of shut down play and make that first exit pass. I think that's the thing you you really like about Adam Juracek. He has the skating and the mobility that you want from a modern-day defenseman. He's willing to throw the body around a little bit. He's an aggressive kid. And while I don't think the offense is quite as aggressive as his older brother, he has a lot of the same traits. He's a guy that was is more than willing to walk the blue line. He, he's a guy that's more than willing to kind of make that first pass and take a hit. He has escapability. There's just a lot of really good things in his game. Maybe he doesn't have truly an elite trait, but mm -hmm. you're getting a really well-rounded guy and a guy that can kind of do a little bit of everything with, with Adam. And then what do you think is the one trait that he needs to kind of work on the most or might be the thing that kind of holds him back other than uh, the knee injury we're assuming? Uh, modern science now that you're seeing guys kind of coming back from these type of injuries more and more, but what else do you think he needs to kind of work on? 
I think the big thing for him is consistency and getting some of that aggressiveness that his older brother David has into his game a little bit. One thing I noted about him when he was playing against men in the Czech league is that he was constantly second guessing himself. He was making the passive play a, a little bit too often. And mm-hmm. while he it was certainly limiting the mistakes he was making, it kind of took out some of the pizzazz of his game that you saw against the junior levels. So I think that's one thing. And as for the injury, weirdly enough, I talked to Adam Walsh not too long ago, uh, who's his agent. And he told me that he should be perfectly ready to go for rookie camps uh, whenever he's drafted and with whatever team he's drafted by. So early July, he should be on the ice and, and, and going and, and getting to see what he can do. So will he be at 100%? I, I, knee injuries always take a little bit longer and a little bit more yeah. seasoning to kind of get going back at 100%. But if he's on the ice this summer, he should be participating in rookie camps. And, and then you look for him to have a big season next year and really show some of the growth that we didn't get to see this year. So, I mean, you mentioned his brother, right? And I think that's going to be the big comparison is, you know, how does his game compare to his brother's game who was, you know, a top five pick uh, by Columbus? Uh, So how do they compare? Well, Adam Adam isn't quite as aggressive and he's not quite as big. I think David Yurichek is a one thing that I know was Will Scout, a guy that you guys love on this podcast as well. Him and I have talked about and Will kind of brought up to me is, Adam doesn't have the same level of psychopath in his game that that David did. David can (laughs) get out there and just be an absolute lunatic at times, just throwing (laughs) crazy hits. And Adam's a little bit more reserved, a little bit more reined in. And that's kind of what you really value about his game. He's kind of polished off some of those things. But with that said, when the puck's on his stick, Sometimes you polish it off too much and you you want to see him make that more aggressive play. And I'm sure that will come with just a little bit more maturity, a little bit more um, familiarity with the men's game. So there's a lot to like about his game, but he's kind of a reined in slightly smaller version of his older brother. Uh, so, I mean, kind of a bigger draft theory, but for the Sharks who have that the Pittsburgh Penguins pick at 14th, uh, is this worth the, the kind of a gamble, right? You, you, assume Macklin Celebrity is going to be, you know, a foundational piece that, you know, feels very much like a, I don't want to say can't miss, but it feels very like a very safe number one overall pick, you know, kind of know what you're getting with Macklin Celebrity. So maybe taking a swing on a guy like your check at 14, who again has potential to be, if he's healthy, he's probably a top 10 pick in this draft. Um, And then you also have two picks very high in the second round it feels like maybe you can kind of swing for the fences with this pick and maybe your check is that type of player yeah i think it's a almost a perfect setup for them because they do have those two high second round picks that first pick with macklin celebrini you're kind of you're gonna hit a home run in the first round regardless yeah so you have the chance to take a swing and you have a chance to go for a guy like adam your who could be the best defenseman in this draft class in, in all honesty. There's there's a legitimate chance of that. So I would certainly consider it. Now, if a guy like Z Booyam is there, I, I I pause a little bit because Z Booyam, in my opinion, is the best defenseman in this draft oh, class. We we at Locked on Sharks are ready to <laughs> give it all up. We're ri- going to risk it all for Z Booyam. We're ready to, to risk it all for Z Booyam because, yeah, Z Booyam, Will Smith's friend. Uh, you're right. Let's find Will Smith a friend. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's a fantastic defenseman. But if Z Williams off the board and you don't really have another guy that you're like, that's the swing or or another guy that fell down the draft, maybe a Berkeley Catton's there and that's the kind of guy you go for. But mm-hmm. unless there's that top end guy that falls, I think Adam Juracek's the, almost the perfect pick for the Sharks at 14 because he gives them a defenseman to foil with the four that they get at first overall. He gives them another piece in the back end where they could certainly use another piece or two, especially this style of kind of do it all defenseman that Adam you're checking. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we know that the sharks, especially the sharks defense right now struggles at getting the puck out of their own zone. Uh, not that you're going to be playing in the NHL next year, but uh, you, you feel pretty good about Shakira Mukumadul's development in the AHL this year. Uh, having a, having more of those guys on your team who can, be stout defensively and also uh, move the puck out of the zone. Uh, that way you uh, hopefully don't have another 150 goal difference or minus 150 goal differential uh, yet again. So, all right, guys, before we continue with Tony, uh, we talk about your checks can development. If the Sharks would maybe bring him over where he would fit within the Sharks defensive pipeline. I uh, just need to take a quick break. It's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL. 
and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. So maybe you like, uh, like the Panthers to kind of finish things off here. Um, between the Canucks and the Oilers, whichever goalie can make a save, which they do make some saves occasionally. Uh, you pick a winner and you'll get a hundred and fifty bucks that you can bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Uh, with your check, right? You these type of player uh European players, you can, you know. They're not going to be in the CHL. You can potentially see them over earlier. Is your check a guy that you maybe leave, especially coming off the knee injury? Or do you maybe want to get him over to North American ice to kind of develop his game over here a little bit quicker? Maybe keep an eye on him with his knee. It, it depends on what the medicals are like in rookie camp. I think that's going to yeah. be the big, big factor. If he seems healthy and he looks like there's progression and, and everything's going well, I'd probably send him back for the year. I'd let him go play in the check league, play against men. Uh, acclimate himself where he's already kind of comfortable outside of the rink. Yep. And then at the end of the year, bring him on over, have him play in a few games at the end of the year in the AHL, uh, get him used to kind of the, the AHL game and the physicality that, that comes with and see where he's at. And then you kind of go the next season and say, Hey, are we ready for the AHL now? Are you ready for this league or, or that league? Where do you want to play? Where, where does it kind of fit for our development pl- path for you? And that's kind of the way I'd go about it. So let them, Go be comfortable outside of the rink and learn to acclimate to the men's game fully because he didn't really get that chance this year as much as yeah. uh, he did play primarily in the men's league. He didn't really play because of the knee injury, unfortunately. So let him go play in the Czech League, bring him to the HL at the end of the year, see what happens. Um, Where would he fit, right? we Right now with the on the blue line, I, I assume Shakir Mukhamadulin's kind of got the crown for the best sharks. I would say probably the best sharks defense, uh, pro- defensive prospect. Um, you put him ahead of Mukhamadulin, you put him behind where you kind of fit in, slotting him in. Adam Yurchek would be the best defense prospect for the sharks. And uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Shakir Mukhamadulin, yeah. but I think the development has been there and he's certainly on path to be an NHLer. I think Adam Yurchek has top four upside and could even be kind of a complimentary guy in that top pair if you have like a, a real true number one up there. So whether he's the the kind of the driving force on a second pair or the complimentary guy on a first pair, I think he could really be a, a legitimate top four defenseman. And and I think that's something that the Sharks don't necessarily have in their system unless it's a, a Muka Madulin who – kind of is going to be a little bit over his head if he is playing on that second or first pair. Uh, don't worry. The Sharks are more than happy to have guys uh, playing way above, kind of punching above their uh, weight limits here. Poor Mario Ferraro. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, right, I, I think, though, with the Sharks, like, they, they should be looking at a defenseman, especially at, at 14, with how many defensemen we've talked about before, but just how many defensemen are in this draft i know there some of them are probably a little bit ahead of that spot but it feels like one's probably going to be there for them whether it's a guy like your check or uh kariyama check or whomever could be potentially there and it, it feels like the sharks really need to kind of take a crack at, at trying to find um a top four potentially top pairing defenseman in this draft right yeah it's a, it's a good draft for defensemen i think it's a draft of, and I, I talked about this a lot this year. People ask me, is it a good draft? Is it a bad draft? And I go, it's a good draft to fill out your roster. There's not a ton of top end of the roster guys. There's not a ton of top pairing guys, but there's a lot of guys that will play on second and third lines, second pairings, and really kind of be key pieces to a roster, even if they aren't the guy. And I think that's yep. the, the thing about this, this draft is it's, do you love third liners and second pairing guys? This draft's the one for you. Uh, and that's the kind of the way I've looked at it. So if you can find a guy like Adam Yurchek who ends up being a second pair guy for you, I think that's a, a big win at 14. All right. So I know comps are a little bit tough, but do you have a comp? Like what, who are you kind of like, okay, I could see him maybe becoming this guy. It, it's tough because he, he plays such a well-rounded game. Um, I, most people, when they look at comps, they they want to go with the Adam Fox, the Cal Makar. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. not he's not that guy. Maybe he's 
a bit more of a physical Devin Tays or something like that at the complete top end of his game. Um, but there's Devin certainly is good. like yeah, Devin Tays is a really good player. If he was on Colorado, it'd be like the best defenseman on basically like 25 teams in the league, right? He's yeah, yeah he's just on Colorado with uh, Kale McCarr, who's like going to be this generation's best defenseman. They're like, yeah, that's just you know. But maybe maybe the other end of the scale is a guy like Adam Pellick. Right, who's a very good defenseman for the Islanders, has done a lot of really good things and, and played big minutes for them over the years, but isn't necessarily the shiniest toy. But when you look at the analytics, when you look at some of the stats and everything, you go, oh, yeah, he is one of the, the better defensemen in the league. He, he's a guy that really doesn't get the love he deserves. So he could be a guy like that, and I think that's kind of where you're looking at with a guy like uh, Adam Yerchek. Did you imagine the Islanders had both those guys? Uh, no. <laughs> Be crazy, eh? Crazy, right? <laughs> um, who, who, yeah, would, who would ruin that? Why would you do that? That seems like a terrible idea to, to not to trade one of those guys away, <laughs> uh, especially to Colorado. Uh, if Colorado calls asking you for a trade, I think you just hang up because you're probably going to lose that trade. Uh, yeah. That's that's what yeah. we've learned, I think, so far. Um, so, I mean, we... we kind of know like kind of especially after last year right with with vegas and uh there's a been a shift you know to the bigger defenseman you know vegas won the title last year with big hulking defenseman and i know you know he's uh adam your is 17 18 and he's already got a, a pretty solid frame but do you think he's maybe kind of fits that mold of maybe not the like six five type of defenseman but those bigger check uh guys who's going to be able to play winning hockey and in, in playoffs yeah, I think he has that in him because, like I said, he doesn't necessarily have that psychopath factor that his brother has, but he'll throw a hit and he has no problem kind of getting in, in the mix on the boards. Um, he's a physical kid. Like he understands that he's he's strong for his age. And mm-hmm. the nice thing is you see him do it a little bit against men. And when it comes out, you're like, oh, wow. Like when this kid's not 17, he's going to be really good at that. So I, I think that element is definitely in his game. And and that's kind of what you love about a guy like Adam Juracek. He is a bit of a physical presence. He can move the puck. He can do a little bit of everything. And you're not looking at him as a guy that is going to have to change his game a lot when he gets to the playoffs. I think yep. you look at some of these defensemen around the NHL. Like I'll, I'll use Morgan Riley as an example. Um, <laughs> Sorry, he hasn't me. been. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but when he gets to the playoffs, he has to figure out how to play the game differently. Yeah. And we saw him do that last year and the Leafs won a round and he was fantastic in that first round for, against Tampa. Really started asserting himself at both ends of the ice and really played well above his head. This year and every other year, <laughs> he hasn't. So I think Adam Juracek's a guy that isn't going to have to change the way he plays. He's going to be a bit belligerent in the regular season and he'll be even more belligerent when he becomes a little bit more comfortable playing against men. And he learns that, Oh, I am strong. I am big. Like there, there is a factor. I think with young kids where they're seventeen, they're going against men, and every once in a while you'll see them throw somebody, and you're like, "Oh, okay, like that's, that was pretty cool." And and they go, and they almost have that same reaction. They're like, "Oh, okay, I just threw that grown man who has two children, um, like <laughs> <In> a mortgage." <laughs> I yeah, exactly right. Like you just threw him into a second mortgage. What is happening? Like. The financial crisis around the globe is already bad enough. But no, like Adam Juracek has that in him. He needs to learn to use it a little bit more. He needs to learn to kind of understand that he is strong. But yeah. once he does, like, look out. All right, guys, before we finish up with Tony, uh, we talk about Macklin Celebrini, what his impact is going to be on the Sharks. Uh, spoiler, is going to be a good impact. Uh, we'll talk about that kind of his impact also on Will Smith and why that kind of is going to make life much easier for Smith going forward. Uh, just need to take a quick break. If you need to get tickets, you need to check out game time. Game time is an authorized ticket marketplace of the NBA makes getting playoff tickets even faster and easier. Price on the Game Time app actually go down closer uh, to tip off. They have killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from their seats, and the lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets and not just NBA tickets. If you want to go to a concert, maybe you want to catch a Giants game, an A's game, whatever it is you want to do, uh, Game Time's got you covered. And I love you can actually see what your seats are going to look like um, before you get there. Nothing worse than getting to an event and realizing you have bad seats. 
Actually, the only thing that works is when you go to checkout and they slam a bunch of fees on top of you with their all in pricing, you know exactly what you're going to pay when you go to check out. No surprises. So take the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKED ON NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKED ON NHL, L O C K E D O N NHL for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets. Lowest price guaranteed. Big news around the Sharks is uh, they won the the first overall pick and uh, the rights to Mac on Celebrini. Uh, Mike Greer has basically said, "Yeah, we're taking Mac on Celebrini," which I love because uh, we don't have to play this dumb like waiting game of uh, will they, won't they? Even though everyone knows everyone knows he's taking Mac on Celebrini, so. What is Mac on Celebrini bringing to San Jose? Uh, was this all worth it, Tony? It uh, it was all worth it. I think I think it was. Um, I always worry about these teardowns that really bring things down to the bare bones. And uh, yeah. when Philip Sedina looks like your best player on some nights, I think you're down to the bare bones. <laughs> it's uh, it was a, it was a rough. Put season, some respect <laughs> on MVP Mikael Granlin's name. Thank you oh, very I'm much. I'm so sorry. I forgot about <laughs> sixty Mikhail points in sixty nine games. Uh, you know that's <laughs> like come on. <laughs> what a stud in the NHL is somebody who had 140 points this season also existed in the same league. <laughs> <laughs> no it, Ugh, it's, it's it, not even the same sport <laughs> i know it was there was a lot of times i'd turn on sharks games and i went they're out there they're, yeah they're they're playing they're william doing his yeah, best yeah <laughs> william eklund did something cool now he's going for a line change we'll see what happens <laughs> yes. but uh no it's it was worth it i think macklin celebrini is going to be the cornerstone for this team Let's not get crazy though. Like this isn't Connor yeah. Bedard, this isn't Connor McDavid, this isn't Austin Matthews. Um, this is a player that probably ends up around the Nico Heischer, maybe a little bit better offensively, but that style of, of first overall pick where he's a very good player and he's the foundational piece. And in my opinion, Heischer is one of the most underrated players in the league. I mean, outside of Alexander Barkov, who everyone's recognized as the most underrated player in the league for 10 years now. Um <laughs> But no, like truly a very elite player that no one talks about. I think Macklin could be that guy. And I think he'll get a little bit more love because he is going to be a first overall pick. He's going to be kind of the spearhead that leads the Sharks to this next generation of, of hopeful contention because they've got some pretty good prospects in the system, and but they still have a lot to go. Um, Macklin's going to be the centerpiece. David Yurchak may be a, a big piece on the back end if they draft him at 14th. And whoever they draft at 14th is going to be a big piece for them going forward because this is a team that has a lot of talent. Will Smith, we talked about Quentin Musty. Uh, there's a lot of players in this talent pool who are looking really good, especially over the last yep. 12 months. So there should be a lot of hope, and Macklin's going to lead that way, and he'll be in the NHL next year most likely. And like you said, um, Mike Greer looks at him and he goes, ah, Boston University. Yeah, that makes sense. We'll, we'll take him. It's uh, <laughs> yep. a match made in heaven. Especially because he'll uh, get to go hang out with his boy, Steph Curry, at the Golden State Warriors games when he's uh, not playing hockey. I mean, you know, he's I mean, the thing I like about, about Macklin is he seems to have a little bit of, you know, I've never talked to the kid, but just watching his interviews and stuff. And he seems to have a little bit of kind of swagger, you know, I mean, he's grown up pl- around NBA players, right? He's grown up uh, hanging out with Steph Curry with Draymond and uh, Green and, and like has a little bit of that. I, that's something the Sharks kind of, they need some energy around the, this franchise uh, right now. But I'm curious. So with, with, you know, you mentioned Will Smith and, what Mac Celebrini, I think, is going to do for Will Smith of potentially that flexibility of if maybe Smith isn't a center, but you have Will Smith as and Mac Celebrini on a line, or if Will Smith does work out as a center, you have Celebrini Smith down the center. Like, uh, we'll talk about that for a little bit, kind of what, what you think this will do for Will Smith, and especially as we kind of wait for Will Smith's decision to either go back to Boston, uh, college or to make that pro that jump to the pros. It's going to be interesting. I think Will Smith's a fantastic player who maybe maybe does profile a little bit better as a winger at the end of the day. And I mean, if your top line ends up being Quinton Musty, Macklin Celebrini, and Will Smith, you're in a good you're in a good spot. That's a, that's a fun that's a fun trio to build around. But like you said, I think Will Smith 
has a chance to be that second line center. And I think this takes a lot of pressure off him to be the guy. And I think that's the biggest thing Macklin Celebrini is going to do for Will Smith is take some pressure off. Like Mm -hmm. for the entirety of this season, whether it was you posting clips of Will Smith or other people and tagging the Sharks and being super stoked about how good he was this year, leading the entire nation in in scoring, passing uh, Macklin Celebrini in the process, it was fun to watch him play hockey but he hasn't played without Ryan Leonard and Gabe Bro in three years. Um, yeah. So we're going to need to see him acclimate to different teammates, different players, in a different environment. Um, yep. We're seeing him at the World uh, Championships right now. And while I think they should be playing him more, because they certainly haven't. Yeah, um, not. <laughs> yes. it, it's 655 uh, is last game. 655 or uh, Tuesday's or Monday's game is uh, this will be out on Thursday. So I think they play on. By the time you hear this, I'll probably play it again. But anyway, sorry. Uh, but yeah, he's not getting enough ice time and uh, sitting for an entire second period uh, because, uh, yes, he made a bad, everyone knows, he made a bad uh, kind of like bad play. The 19 year old kid made a bad play. <laughs> like, but yeah. That's just it, right? Like, you, yeah. especially with the Sharks the next couple of years, you're going to see the 19 year old kids making the bad play. You're going to see a 21 year old make a mistake. But that's part of the process. That's part of the growth. And I think with a guy like Will Smith, because of how flashy, because of how skill-based, because of how dynamic he is, he's going to need to go to the NHL and try stuff, fail at that, and then go, that's not something I can do. Uh, And and I think (laughs) having Celebrini ahead of him now on the depth chart and probably not starting at center, like if we're being realistic – he'll be able to kind of go in and slot in on the wing to start and and work his way towards being a full-time center in the NHL. It's going to take a lot of pressure off him. It's going to take a lot of kind of the hype. It's going to dial it down a little bit. And we're going to be allowed to watch him kind of flourish into the player that I think we all know he can become. So whether it's Macklin Celebrini, uh, Will Smith and Philip Bystet down the middle, or you find someone else for one of those slots and Will Smith goes on the wing, I think the Sharks are in a pretty good situation right now. Yeah, it's it's been a painful, you know, 12 to 24 mm-hmm. months for, for Sharks fans with, uh, you know, Brent Burns, Timo Meyer, Tomas Hurdle, Eric Carlson. Um, you know, there's there's a question about Logan Couture's future if we even plays hockey again at, at this point. But uh, the future is bright. Like, it's it's this is this is a team that's still a lot of work to be done, but you can see the foundational pieces in uh, for this team. Uh, going forward and again like Celebrini I think helps everyone kind of slot into the right place here along the forwards you know and like William Eklund who had a very good season I know you know 45 points in his first full season but again this team was garbage and he played half the season with Luke Cunning as a center um Sorry, Luke Cunning. But like <laughs> there's there's a lot of exciting stuff here. And you like imagine, okay, like now Eklund passing to Quentin Musty or Eklund passing to to Celebrini or whoever. Like th- this team is it's it's gonna be a couple more years, but you can see where, where this team's heading. So uh we'll get you out of here with two questions. So um I've asked you who you think is gonna be the best player, not Celebrini. I've asked you the player in the top ten who you're kind of a little queasy on. Which player are we not talking about enough as we start to kind of kind of dig in deep Ooh. into the draft season? I'm going to go with a guy that's been in my top 10 for a while now. It's and me. I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's JD. Um, but no, I think the only other person that has him in their top 10 among the rankings that are kind of out there and credible is Will, Will Scouch. And that's Alphonse Frey the Swedish defenseman who is an absolute blast to watch. He's an offensive guy and he, he brings so much poise and puck moving ability to the game. And the one thing I'll say about his game is a lot like the way I I talk about Z Williams defensive game, where he's a calming presence. He's a guy that Mm -hmm. kind of isn't going to go out there and smash and grind and and beat someone up in front of the net. He's going to go and simply strip the puck off your stick, move it up ice and, and play defense by simply taking it from you. He's yep. not going to go and, and be this dominant physical presence, but Alphonse Frey is a little bit bigger. He can p- defend the front of the net a little bit. Um, he ties up sticks really well. He's never going to be the big guy that throws the hit, but man, this kid can play some solid defense. 
Um, I know there's some questions about it. I, I think like I've watched the kid so many times this year that I go, there's at least a path towards him being a plus defender. And he's already a plus puck mover. Um, you look at a guy like Axel Sanding Pelica last year. And I think uh, Frey maybe doesn't have the high end dynamism, mm -hmm. but he's a little bit more refined as a puck mover and his defensive game's better. Um, I, I think I'd probably rank them right in the same range if you were putting them around in the same draft. And, and honestly, I might like Alphonse Frey a little bit better. So I think he's a guy that I think deserves a ton more love. Um, one of my favorite things about the U18s was every time I'd watch Sweden, uh, whether it was Craig Button or whoever else was announcing the games, they'd be like, oh, look at Leo Salin Willanius is leading the, the Swedish team in ice time. And I'd be like, I don't think that's true. And then I'd go check, and Alphonse Frey would be playing a minute or two more than him at that point. And I'd be like, yeah, let's hype up Leo Salin Willanius. Definitely hype him up so that Alphonse Frey is a pick in the second round or is a pick in the late first round. Um, I think he's a top 10 talent in this draft class. I think he's going to be a really dynamic offensive defenseman. And I think he's worth uh, maybe considering at that 14th pick if, if mm. uh, a guy like Juracek and Z. William aren't there. Yeah, uh, he's. I know the hype. It's the hype train starting to build for him. Uh, and Axel Sandin Pelico is my favorite defenseman in the last year's class. And uh, yeah, that that sounds good, especially uh, if maybe he does fall. And the Sharks have that pick thirty three and pick forty two. Uh, let's ride with that. All right, Adam Yurchek, what pick does he go in the draft? I think Adam Yurchek goes twenty third. I don't know who's wow, there. I think he falls but I think he falls. I think teams are going to be weary about his leg, um, his knee. He's not going to be performing on the ice before that, the draft. So I think teams are going to be a little bit weary. And I think he's going to go in the mid 20, early to mid twenties. And I think we're going to look back a year or two from now and go, man, we all should have realized that it's 2024 and modern medicine exists. Oh, let's see. You said pick 23. Wow. Look, Toronto. Uh, congrats. Oh, is it? Hey, Yo, no, let's go. Oh, no. My, my favorite I, team got one of my favorite players in the draft. <laughs> then, then you know what? Let's go 22 so that we, we make sure Toronto doesn't get him. <laughs> um, yeah, 22 is Nashville right now. So, uh, sure. it's, yeah, it's Nashville. So, uh, Tony, where can the people find you, buddy? You can find all my work at the Hockey News and find me on Twitter at the Tony Ferrari. I'll be ramping up posting videos and everything. I've been collecting so much over the year. It's going to be fun to watch because it's a it's a fun draft class, an interesting draft class, and certainly a diverse group of players who kind of are all over the place. Whether you look at my board, Will's board, Bob McKenzie's board, or whoever else, it's a, it's a lot of fun. So follow me on Twitter and follow me at thehockeynews.com. Uh, thanks, Tony. I'm sure uh, I owe you a beer in Vegas, so it'll be fun. Thanks, buddy. Cheers, man. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed my conversation with Tony. Uh, Juracek's an interesting player because of the knee injury. Again, if he doesn't blow at his knee, I expect we're talking about him as a potential top 10 pick. Um, and this could be a guy where a couple of years from now, we're like, how did he get slide to the mid potential 20s in the first round uh, because of how talented he is? And I know there's going to be concerns with the medical, but I think nowadays with knee injuries, it's so they're just the turnaround and like players just come back bigger, faster, stronger than they were before. So I wouldn't be worried about it if the Sharks, if they feel safe, if uh, to pick him at 14, I would be ecstatic because I think um, you're looking at a potential like number two, number three type of player defenseman for you uh, going forward. So um, that's going to be it for me today, though. We'll be back tomorrow. Uh, we'll continue, you know, kind of digging through the wreckage that was this season. Um, next week, we'll probably also start looking at uh, free agency a little bit as the Sharks have a bajillion dollars to spend and they need to spend some money to, to the cap. Uh, so we'll kind of start digging into free agency here soon as well. So make sure you guys are following wherever you get podcasts. And of course, you can watch on YouTube as well. Follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Locked On Sharks. Follow me on Twitter at MyFryHole. Till tomorrow. Bye, friends.